I'm Deborah Laumendier. I'm a senior horticulturalist here at the conservatories at Missouri Botanical Garden. I'm going to be giving you a virtual tour of the Climatron today. The garden was established in 1859. For the first half of the 20th century, where we were standing was the Palm House, a huge Victorian-style display house constructed of cast iron and curved plate glass. When it needed to be replaced in the 1950s, the garden's director decided to look to the future and they went with the ultimate in mid-century modern, a geodesic dome. The Climatron was to be modern, the aluminum structure supporting a plexiglass covering and an automated climate control system for heating and cooling. The Climatron turned 60 this year, just 11 days after I did. I'm going to take you back in time today, show you what was old in the Climatron in 1960, what was new in 1960, and what we're trying to do now in the 21st century. These plants, this bed, was in the old palm house. This is called the cycad ridge. Cycads are an old primitive plant family. They're called dinosaur plants because they were around in the time of the dinosaurs. This is where dinosaurs ate because following plants hadn't evolved yet. I always say I know why dinosaurs went extinct, because their diet. Because if you touch these things, they're like fiberglass with thorns. This blue plant, the Cephalardus horridus, has been in the garden since 1917. These ones here behind me, Diuan spinulosum, these have been in the garden since 1907. This little cycad is a Diuan eduli. We have three of these. They were gifts from the Mexican government after the 1904 World's Fair. And this little plant here is Polycius marginata. The interesting thing about this little plant is as far as we can tell from our records, this has been its part of the garden, part of the Climatron since 1898. Obviously we've taken cuttings and restarted it over the years and it's been recently cut back, which is why it's so small right now. But 1898 or the best record we can come up with it. It's uh, originally purchased from uh, Sanders and Company in uh, St. Albans, England. Not all the plants in the Climatron are terribly old. This one here behind me is a relative youngster. Planted in 1982, the year I started the garden. It's a double coconut palm from the Seychelles Islands called double coconut because the seed looks like two coconuts fused together. It was a gift from uh, the National Tropical Botanical Garden in Hawaii, and it's the largest seed in the plant kingdom. This is the banyan tree, Ficus banyanalis. It's been in the Climatron since 1960. It's one of our first plants that we have records of. It's been in the garden though since 1918. See, it has the interesting aerial roots coming down. Some of these trees have been uh, known to spread out in their native habitats in India and in the tropics to cover acres. Some of you probably remember we closed uh, in 1988 for two years and underwent a major renovation. Uh, we took out the plexiglass, which just in time, I don't know if you all can see this, this is an actual sheet of our old plexiglass. You can sort of see my hand through it. It's very brittle, very crazed, it's very yellowed. And it was uh, still has the old neoprene gasket in the back. But what we replaced it with is actual true glass. Two sheets of tempered glass with a sheet of plastic sandwiched in between. We got all new sidewalks, we got all new beds. But a lot of new plants. We kept a lot of the old plants. We just put uh, construct orange construction fencing around them and drove the bulldozers around where it needed to be. And uh, it took two years. The renovation allowed us to preserve this bit of uh, the tropical rainforest uh, here in the Midwest for people to enjoy for many more years to come. I love plants with stories. This is your Dracaena. We used to think it was Dracaena umbraculifera, which is a species that's extinct in the wild from the island of Mauritius. And we did some DNA studies and discovered, you know, that it's actually a cousin, Dracaena reflexa, which is still a cool, cool story because it's, the plant has been here at the garden since 1903. Um, and then 10 years ago, 
walking on the other side of the sidewalk, it started to sprout pups up. For some reason, we don't know why it was only 10 years ago, but it started to sprout pups. Right before quarantine, we uh, had a staff meeting and they showed a picture of Henry Shaw lying in state in the museum building, surrounded by potted plants. And uh, some of us realized that one of the potted plants looked familiar and we realized it was uh, actually one of, it was this Dracaena uh, as, a, as a young young pup. It was very distinctive with the long, thin, wavy leaves and it was obvious it couldn't be anything else. So from 1903, now we know that the plant has been here at least since uh, 1889. The shrub right here is Crescentia porteriensis from the island of Puerto Rico. It's an endangered species. When we first got this plant back in 1990, we had three of them and there were only 42 known to exist in the world. They've discovered more since then, very few seedlings suspected that the seeds are dispersed by a rodent that's extinct on the island, which makes another reason this makes it so important that we keep uh, plants like this alive in the climate time. This is called a queen's palm, but I always think of it as Alan's palm. Alan Galuski was uh, head of the horticulture department when I first started here at the garden in 1982. Uh, he came here uh, at the garden to the garden in the 1970s with Dr. Rabin from California and was uh, here for the uh, building of the Japanese garden as well. He was uh, so smart and so talented and uh, he died of a pulmonary embolism uh, March of 1988, the day before the Climatron closed for renovation. And this uh, palm was in a pot in his office. Anna's Copelandii from the Philippines. You can see it's got these cool prop roots down here. These are actually to help hold it up because they normally grow in swamps. This tree is from one of the original trees here in the Climatron from the 1960. The only tree we saved down here on the lower level during the renovation in 1988. I know I saw a picture once of this tree being brought in with a ball and burlap on the end of a front end loader through the back of the Climatron before it was constructed in 1960, but I haven't been able to find that picture since. But I, so I know this is one of the original plants from 1960. This is also one of the few, the only tree in here that I've ever personally climbed. If you look at it, how the branches are structured, it's actually built in ladder form. It's like made to climb. I used to climb it once a year to clean all the dead leaves out of it. These are bananas. Banana plant. See, a lot of people say banana trees, but that's not correct because tree implies wood. There's no wood in these. They're the world's largest herb. You can cut it with your fingernail. You can cut one down with a pocket knife, which I've done before, just to prove to myself that I could. Because once these individual fruits develop on here and turn yellow, we have to take the plant out. They only bear once. And from the size of a small sucker, about knee high, up to full size and the fruit turning yellow and ripening takes about two years. Part of the garden's mission is to discover and share knowledge about plants. And here in the Climatron, we do that by growing plants from parts of the world called biodiversity hotspots. Biodiversity hotspots are places with species found nowhere else on Earth and that are threatened by human population pressure and now climate change. There are around 30 such places in the world, and one is Madagascar and the other islands of the Indian Ocean. This bed here is where we help to preserve plants like the Cylindrocliny and the Nesicodon and Wright's Gardenia. Other tropical hotspots such as Hawaii and the Caribbean are also areas that the Climatron plans to showcase. relatively new area we just put in this year in the Climatron. We're calling it the Gizmeriad Gallery. Gizmeriads are a plant family. The most uh, uh, specimen you're most likely familiar with is African violets. African violets are Gizmeriads. Got little ones right here. A lot of these were started from seed from Gateway West Gizmeriad Society. So uh, we're going to see how they do here in the Climatron. Some have been here a while. 
This columnia here was uh, actually uh, collected by uh, myself and uh, Dr. John McDougall back in Ecuador back in 1991. So it's been here in the Climatron for a while. I hope you all have enjoyed this virtual tour of the Climatron. See where we've come from and where we plan on going. Every plant has a story. I've enjoyed sharing a few of them with you today. Thank you.